this is Wayne Belisle, and we're talking in this article about speeding up your cash flow, how improving the business cycle will dramatically increase your cash balance. Look, in every business, cash is king. Simple, un no, no doubt about it. Without it, you're out of business. You can be profitable. I've seen uh, plenty of companies that are showing a profit, but have no cash because it's all tied up in receivables, work in process, um, you know, they, in inventory. They've bought too much equipment, so they're making they're making loan payments that are not deductible. It shows they're making a profit, but their cash isn't there. Those businesses, flat out out of business. It's very simple. Every business has something called overhead. Overhead, and I like to joke, these are expenses that are hanging over your business owner's head every single minute of every day, whether you make a sale or not. These are things like rent, employees, staff, your, your staff uh uh, salaries, and we're not talking about somebody that's on commission or somebody that doesn't get paid unless there's a sale. Um, we're talking about things like in loan interest, we're talking about uh, equipment lease, we're talking about property taxes, we're talking about insurance. Man, if you're in business, you know what I'm talking about. You sign the checks. I mean, I say business, I joke about this. Every business has, collects a bunch of money, a bunch of cash with their left hand, pays out a bunch of cash with their right hand, and hopes a few pennies stick around. What we're hoping for here in this cash, this this article is showing you some ways that speeding up the cash flow will help you keep more than just a few pennies, hopefully a few dollars. So, what is uh, the cause of most cash problems? Well, when we talk about receivables as a common one, um, and we have an article on collecting receivables in three easy steps, and even in this one we talk about a little bit how if you're forced to have receivables, how you can turn that into cash. But the truth is, what really causes most businesses cash flow problems is somewhere in their whole business cycle, there's, their sales to cash cycle is another way to say it. How long does it take you to take that sale and turn it into cash? That whole cycle should be measured in days, the average amount of days it takes you to make that happen. And there's a lot of steps there. I mean, it really goes back before the sale. You have to advertise. You, you send out an advertise. Hopefully you're not doing, you know, uh, large company advertising, you know, uh, where you're doing image building advertising. Hopefully all your advertising is targeted. So let's say you send out a direct mail piece. Well, you have to spend time designing a direct mail piece. You have to get it printed. You have to mail it, all right? So how long between the time you do that advertisement and the time the sale turns into cash? Well, one of the things you can do is speed up that whole process at the very beginning. All right, your customer places an order. Here's a problem I have. You know, to place an order, um, let's take Amazon. They're a great example. Um, and I give this as any two businesses. Let's say I have one business, and this let's let's describe the problem a little better. I have one business that you know they put in. You call in, you know, as a prospect, and they, oh, we'll get back to you. All right, and they, you know, well, they call you in a week, and then they have an appointment in two weeks, and then. They sit down with you and, oh yeah, we need to get your proposal. And it's a week or two later before they get a proposal. And then they schedule the work another couple of weeks later. And then they bill at the end of the month. All right? What just happened here? What just happened is that it basically took almost two months to go from the time you called me to the time I actually sent an invoice. And then you still need to pay it. I give you 30, 60 days to pay or whatever you end up paying. I could be looking at 60, 90, 120 days before I even get paid for that item. In the meantime, this business has to, you know, pay their employees, buy the product if there's some product involved in this. Let's take somebody like Amazon who's gone completely the other way. They keep your credit card on file. They, they sell it to you that it's a, an advantage to you because you know, it is. I mean, you know, I go shopping on Amazon. I don't have to sit down and type in 10 different things that I need to do. I basically just need to say, I, here's my credit card on file. Go ahead and use that. I want that camera. All right? So I click, yeah, that's the camera I want, click, I want it, oh, and they deliver it the next day. They've received their money. Their whole sales cash, their sales to cash cycle literally is instantaneous almost because they really won't ship until my credit card is charged. Heck of a difference between the first model and the second model, all right? So what you want to do now, you're not Amazon, you might not be selling a product, but there are ways to speed that whole process up. And I'll give you, a, using myself, i give you some examples, but we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, your staff turns up, the customer places an order. Well, look at how long it takes you to get that order in place. If you're selling a product, how long does it take you to get that product to them? All right? It should be almost instantaneous like Amazon's. All right? Follow them as an example. If you're selling a service, how fast can you get the service scheduled and put out there and get it turned around and delivered? All right? The problem that happens is when you get busy, things fall apart. It happens to us. We finish a tax return. I'm moved on to the next one, especially in April, you know, March and April. 
uh, again in September and October with the extension. So I moved on to the next one, and I don't realize that tax return is standing there and no one's called the client. No one's called the client. He hasn't come picked it up. If he hasn't come picked it up, I haven't gotten paid. All right? So there is a, a way to speed up the product. Also, one of the things that we did is ident segment your different products. We took the, the, pro the tax returns that are more of a a uh, commodity, they're very much simpler to do, and my staff can do it. We wrote up procedures for that. And with one of our past issues, we talked about procedures, I think it was November or December, go back and look and you'll see it, it's on the cover. Um, writing, writing those procedures is the main way that you can improve how you get an order out faster, okay? Then the product is delivered, all right? Make sure the product's delivered timely. Invoice is sent. Too many people, especially in the service industry, invoice later. But this is a problem in everything. I have people that, uh, you know, yard people, people that clean up the yard, pool people, you know, they, they send me an invoice or they stop in later. Why don't they, now with today's technology, why don't they have a, one of those on their phone, one of the little swipe cards where I can swipe and get paid right then? Better yet, why don't they sell me a plan in advance where I pay, they run my credit card in the first of the month for all the work that's going to be done for the month. I want them to do it. They, that way, they would, matter of fact, it would increase sales because they don't want to have to lose the sale because I forget to call them. So invoice quicker, all right? Um, when the money comes in, let me give you a weird example. It couldn't be anything. The checks actually came in. I looked at Coca-Cola. It took them a week to cash a check. <laughs> totally amazing to me. Because what happened is the check would come in, the secretary would sit on it, she would have to sign all the checks, and she would make a log of all the checks, and she would hand them to accounting. If accounting had a problem with any one of the checks that were receivable, they held the whole batch. And then they, when they finally released the batch, they turned it over to the cage, which had, took all the cash receipts they got from the Coke machines, and they basically combined it with that and made a deposit. It could take a week. We changed that like the first week I was there. We made the secretary make copies of the checks make a deposit slip and the deposit went in the bank that day. It doesn't sound like a lot, but in a $300 million business, which is what they were doing in El Paso at that time, this is back in the 80s and God knows what it is now, but in a $300 million business, speeding up cash flow by one week allowed us to actually make over $100,000 in interest income. All right? I don't think that in any business is worth talking about, okay? But, you know, it's amazing. I, let's take it on a smaller level. I've had one little lady who, you know, they got their loan at a small bank and they, they didn't have a branch near her, so she basically did quite a bit of cash. But they made their deposit on Friday. You know, I talked to her into doing two deposits a day, I'm sorry, a week, and just go on Tuesday and go on Friday, and showed her how that little bit, if saved in a savings account, could bring in about two to $3,000 a month. Yeah, pay for her vacation if nothing else, okay? Um, the staff gets paid, then, you know, there's ways to slow that down. If you're doing weekly, you might want to look at, at possibly not doing weekly. Maybe you don't have as much staff. Different article for different time. Vendors are paid. There's something you can do a lot of times where you can slow it down. Look, in a perfect world, you would receive your cash entirely at the, in the at, at, you would receive it in the way I wrote it out in the article. You'd invoice it, you'd collect the money, you pay your staff, you pay the vendors. The truth is, it just never works that way. So if it doesn't work that way, you need to do things. Um, one of the main things I hear at this point is, well, I can't do that because my industry doesn't do it that way. I love that one. Um, I used it. <laughs> In the accounting industry, it was just kind of standard for tax returns. Everybody and their uncle's doing tax returns, so it was kind of standard for us to do the return. Sent When they picked up the return, they paid us. A few problems. One, if they owed money, they weren't in a hurry to pick up the return. They owed the IRS, and then they owed me, so what the heck, let's just do an extension and wait six months to pick it up. If ever. We, every year, we would have one or two that never picked it up. All right made a decision that we were going to change that. So what we started doing, first of all, is we, you know, we've made a few changes and we're still changing, all right? So one change we did right off the bat is we said we're not going to send the return until it's actually, we're not going to give you the return until you pay. And we take credit cards, so we started accepting credit cards. But we went a step further and we said, what if we basically gave you, uh, how can we get them to pay in advance? So what we did is we got the IR, we, we put together a letter, we gave them a little discount, and we said, hey, you know, if you pay us monthly in advance, all right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our large bill and we're going to break it into monthly payments here, only paying a small payment every month, and then we're going to give you three months off. Sounds like we're losing money, but what we did is we upsold an audit protection plan. So see what we did, we combined two different products, created a second tier, 
It gave them a discount, gave them the choice of taking the audit protection. What happened is exactly what I'd expected in the first year, and we made them sign a two-year deal. So in the first year, we broke even because the people that took the discount, enough of them took the audit protection. Second year, we had about a 20% increase because basically what's happening is that they're taking their discount. They're, they're buying the extra product without the discount, right? Now, too, another thing we added is all new tax clients have to put a 50% down payment, all right? And we created a bunch of prepayment packages for all our businesses that combine products, which is another way to get prepaid. So my goal, and we're about a third of the way there, is to have all my expenses covered every month by prepaids. We started about two years ago, we're at about 30 to 40%. I haven't done the math lately. So here's a key cash building tip. Don't assume just because all your competitors do it one way that you have to do it the same way. Don't be afraid to look at how you're treating your customers and how you're getting paid and look for ways to get paid at the time of the sale or even before the sale. This is a key component of speeding up sales to cash cycle and just eliminate receivables to start with. Every business I ever worked with that took at least half their money up front with the order never had a cash flow problem. All right? This is kind of important. I go into other things, what you must do if you sell receivables and how to slow things down. But pay attention to your cash, your sales cycle. And I guess what I would say is diagram every single step from the time you put the ad in the paper or the advertisement or at least at the time they place the order to when you get your cash and figure out a way to compress that. The slower you can get that, the smaller you can get that time between the order and the cash, the less you run out of cash. The more cash you'll have in your bank and the less stress you'll have in your life. For now, this is Wayne Bilal and let's make this our best year ever. Thank you.